Hey there, baseball fans. It's Ben, and I am back with another of my world-famous player collections. This time, we're talking about the one, the only, El Gran Gato, Andres Calaraga. Now, I gotta tell you, Andres Calaraga, um, he, he's one of those guys who's like borderline Hall of Fame. He they probably should be in the Hall of Fame, if you ask me, especially coming out of the steroid era, when he was not one of those guys implicated in the PED scandals of the 90s. Um, seemingly an all-around good guy, a Venezuelan baseball player, um, which we've had a, a, a string of those, but not a ton of those in, in baseball history, um, but battled cancer uh, during his playing days and was comeback player of the year twice, twice, count them two times. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody who has had comeback player of the year twice. Um, just an all-around good guy and great player. Let's run through some career stats here. Uh, played from 1985 to 2004, career batting average 288, Hits of 2,333, 399 home runs, one shy of the 400 home run club, and RBIs of 1,425. So again, really close, borderline Hall of Fame numbers. Uh, and for someone coming out of the steroid era, not using steroids, I think that should give him a little bit of boost. Played for a lot of teams, though. I think that's probably part of his downfall. Primarily known for his time with the Expos and the Rockies, but was with the Expos. Brief stint with the Cardinals uh, before heading over to the, the Rockies. Then uh, spent some time with the Braves. Uh, the Rangers, the San Francisco Giants, back to the Expos, back to the Giants, and then finishing up with the Anaheim Angels in 2004. So uh, in that time, he amassed five All-Star games, two-time Gold Glove winner, two-time Silver Slugger Award winner, National Batting League Champion in 1993, the Home Run Champion in 1996, and uh, two-time NLRBI leader in 96 and 97. And I know that that 96 um, home run leader came when he was a part of the Colorado Rockies. And some people will say, well, look, the air is pretty thin there, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I think he's a great player and a good guy. So I want to highlight a player collection I put together over the last couple of years through collections I've bought, packs I've ripped, sets I've broken, etc. Uh, and honestly, it's a pretty darn good collection if I do say so myself, starting off with a bunch of rookies, which is always a fun way to start. So here is his 1986 uh, Fleer update card. I don't think he has an 86 Tops traded card, which is key here. So these are his earliest cards here, and he's got a handful from 86. So there's 86 Fleer update. There's his 86 Donruss rated rookie, which is a regular set issue here, which is, makes it, I think, probably the most prestigious card in his rookie collection. I've got a handful of them. This one actually is in great shape, really good centering, um, etc. There's another good one. And then I've got a bunch of his Canadian Leaf from 86 as well. All of them in really good shape, good centering too. So if I were a grading kind of guy, those would be ones I'd get grading. So I've got a handful of those. And then 86 Sports Flicks, the Rookies set. So there's another one for you from 1986. Pretty good stack of uh, Andres Galarraga early rookie cards there. And then we head into 87, which is, uh, we'll call his tops rookie, I think. So there's 87 tops rookie card from the famous 87 wood bordered set. And I've got a handful of those. Plus... The Canadian version, the OPG, you can see with the white card stock on the back there, which is always cool and nice in the French uh, translations. Then here is his 87 Fleer, and this is the glossy version from the tin glossy set, as well as the glossy Fleer Classic Mini. Uh, there's an 87 Donruss, 87 Canadian Leaf, 87 Donruss uh, Baseball's Best or Opening Day, I forget which one that is, I think it's Opening Day. And then the uh, Broder, the rookies, Rob Broder, unlicensed set, which kind of with these uh, rounded corners, a very cool set. So again, very cool set of Andres Galarraga rookies before we head off into 1988, which we get uh, as 88 tops. His top superstar stickers. There is his league leaders, glossy mini. There is his tops big, 88 Fleer, 88 Fleer baseball's best, 88 Donruss, which is a lot of those as you might imagine. And his first score card, the premier year of score, 1988 score. And he was, you know, he's called the big cat for a reason. Um, six foot three, 235 pounds, big guy, but could move. Very agile. On to 1989. This is the tallest stack I have in my collection here, 1989 tops. There is his all-star card after he was a 1988 all-star for the first time. Don Russ, we have quite a few, 1989 base set. 1989 Diamond King, 1989 Baseball's Best, 
1989 pop-up all-stars there's that baseball best you can always tell because they have the back different back with the full stats this is 89 score with nice action shot a bunch of those there's an 89 upper deck so his first upper deck card as well as his team uh, upper deck card there Oop, and there's the 89 top superstar sticker 89 Fleer, working a lot like the Billy Ripken, but without expletive, expletives on his bat. There he is with uh, Gerald Perry, 89 Fleer, and then baseball's exciting stars from 89 Fleer as well. Nice big stack there. Then we have 1990, and I've got a lot of 1990 tops in my so far fruitless hunt for blacklist cards. I've got a lot of these 1990 tops, a lot of 1990 Donruss. There's 1990 Fleer. There's a Bowman card. That's a good looking card for 1990 Bowman. I got a lot of his 1990 score from all those Bo Jackson uh, hunts I did. There's the uh, 1990 score. This is the Superstar set. There's 1990 Upper Deck. There's Classic Travel with the Blue Border. And 1990 Tops Big. On to 1991. Surprisingly, it's a short stack. Usually 1991 is where I have a lot of cards. Got a lot of his 1991 Tops cards. You can see... All of them, I think, are light back. Yep. With a light watermark. Uh, then we have 1991 score, 91 Bowman, 91 Donruss, 91 Studio, where you learn that he likes to paint. If you look on the back there. Uh, 91 Upper Deck and 91 Leaf. On to 1992, which is his last cards with the Expos, you'll see. There's his tops, there's... Opeachy Premier, which came out later in the year and shows him on his Cardinals team. And there's 1992 Pinnacle, same thing. Um, 1992 Fleer, Score, Donruss, Upper Deck, Low Series on the Expos, and High Series on the Cardinals with a really good action shot there. And he was only with the Cardinals for that one season of 1992. So you'll see his 1993 cards on the Cardinals. But there's his tops traded. 1993 Tops Traded on the Rockies, as well as his uh, Tops, for some reason this is a uh, Tops gold, Black Gold, it says Rookies, but he's not a rookie, obviously, so Andres Galarraga Tops Black Gold Rookies, which is a cool card to have. Uh, there's 1993 Donruss, and this is the High Series here, so you can see it says Free Agent, whenever he's wearing his Cardinals uniform, but it says Rockies down there, as well as his Hostess Cupcakes. Uh, there's Fleer Flare from 1993, the inaugural year of that, I believe. There is Score Select from 1993. But this is the blue one, which is the traded version, you can see. I didn't even know they had a traded version of Score Select, but there you go. There's 1993 Leaf, also released later in the year with him in the Rockies, and 1993 Upper Deck High Series in the Rockies, as well as two of his uh, 1993... Um, why am I blanking on this bookmark collection here? Diamond Marks, Diamond Marks, that's what it was. Uh, there's his 1994 tops, him sliding into third pretty hard. Look at him hitting that third base and just crushing it. I'm sure that didn't feel so good. It's 94 score, 94 studio, good looking card there. Uh, Fleer Ultra, the league leaders nationally batting average. It's a nice little insert. Uh, there's Donruss, 94. Look at this little oddball Oscar Mayer superstar roundup round cards and they were if you pull the top it pops up but i'm not going to break that seal uh post serial 94 there's his home field advantage for his electric diamond version for upper deck showing his time in coors field in colorado there is the uh this is the um opg which is a set i'm not too terribly familiar with this 94 opg set and then we have 94 fleer nationally batting crown leader so this is a uh Insert set, I believe. There you have that. And then, on to 1995. Got a handful of these, too. So, 1995 tops. Um, classic confrontations. So, there you go. I'm not sure why it's a... Oh, versus the aces. Okay, there you go. Uh, there's Bazooka Gum from tops. There's the blue-bordered uh, Upper Deck select uh, Collector's Choice. There is the Collector's Choice Silver Signature International Flavor, showing his Venezuelan heritage. There is 1995 uh, Score Select. And this is the Pacific Crown Collection here. And for 1995, a strange little oddball uh, set that 
popped up for about five years or so, and then 1995, Donruss. Moving on to 1996, got a handful of his 96 tops, and uh, this is, uh, you can see he's got some league-leading stats right there in red, and there is the collector's choice from Upper Deck as well. 1997, we've got 1997 tops, which this is his last year, I think, with the uh, Rockies. Good action shot him there of him turning some kind of a double play or not sure what because he's a first baseman. Then these bleacher reachers, uh, let's say tops insert, as well as king of swing. So there's that one. And then finally, pinnacle clout. And then uh, we have the specific crown one once more. And finishing up with a couple stragglers here at the end. Here he is on the brave, some tops 1999, and then him on the rangers. With that, I think this is a Fleer Flare from 2001 or so. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this collection review of Andres Galarraga, the big cat. Hats off to you, buddy. And I hope you make it to the Hall of Fame someday. See you next time.